Hello everyone, welcome back to Technology Moments. We're going to show you how to create a guest portal um, using this unified dream machine. We're going to also use this uh, access point, the unified access point in wall HD, which also has a, a switch at the bottom, very useful for hotels, convention centers, schools, and many other businesses. Right here, we're going to use the US 8 uh, 150 watt and we're going to also compare it with the setup in the Unified Cloud Key Generation 2. Let's be clear that there are many, many ways of creating a portal. You don't have to use all the devices from Unify. Uh, we recommend, of course, to use a device that has everything on it. For example, the Unified Dream Machine Pro is a 3-in-1. Uh, the Unify, the 4-in-1. The Unified Dream Machine like this one is a 3-in-1. Switch, access point, and network controller. Uh, we're going to use right here um, the firmware 186 and we're going to base it on the latest um, controller available up to date. Let's remember that this is something that is constantly changing and so they are constantly updating the, the graphical interface, which is something very, very cool. I'm going to show you a couple scenarios in which first we're going to set it up in the unified dream machine and then we're going to set it up in the unified cloud key generation 2. so at the first thing we need to do if we're going to set it up in the uh, as a radius authentication which is something that gives us a lot more security and uh, is a, a lot more practical in the real sense of the word um, we're going to go over here and activate the radius server the advantage of having a radius server is that each one of the users in the network is going to have a username and password right here we're not going to use for an enterprise um, the, uh, let's say scenario we're going to use it for a hotspot which is much much easier but it requires us to create the users one by one so we're going to create the first user and we're, i'm going to show it uh, i'm going to show you how to create the first user and then you're going just to create the other users just as it is uh, remember that unify up to date has not provided us with a tool in order to create a batch of let's say 50 users 60 users or 100 users which would be very very helpful if we're going to create a user which is assigned a vlan id we're going to have to continue with this virtual lan uh, and the type of the connection or the type of the tunnel has to be set to the number six right here. Right now, we're just going to create the, the untagged VLAN point-to-point uh, -point tunneling protocol and IPv4 as the type of the tunnel. Um, once we have it right here, that's all we need to do. We're just going to apply the changes for the radius server to start because it is a service that is going to start in the... Um, in the in the unified dream machine and let's remember that it gives us the advantage of not sharing one single key or the password for the wireless network for everybody you just are going to create new users and you're going to delete all the users or just deactivate them so let's apply the changes right here and let's continue with the wi-fi hotspot setup we go here to the settings, Wi-Fi. We're going to use the new settings. We're not going to use the classic settings in order for us to get accustomed to it. We're going to name the hotspot. We're going to put hotspot zero right here. We're going to activate the guest portal, which is required. And we're going to add the authentication type radius. Uh, remember that we can have more than one authentication type. We can have radius and vouchers. And remember that you have the option also right here of uh, Google and Facebook authentication. Right here we have the radius set up already and we have the customization, of course, the customization options for the portal. And we're just going to leave it as it is. We're just going to change the terms of use right here. I just copied and pasted over here a welcome text, which is something that is very cool in order for you to make a little bit of marketing or something like that. Uh, in the advanced options that usually goes down to the bottom, uh, go a little up up here. Uh, we're going to find the Wi-Fi band. We can also select which band we're going to use. And the, the coolest thing is that we can create the access point groups. If we have 50 access points for the, for the hotspot, we are going to assign those to a group and then assign the hotspot to that specific group of access points. Okay, so right here, what we're going to do is just um, 
Uh, I previously created a hotspot uh, access point group, uh, which is something very useful. And right here, I'm going to set to 365 days the session expiration. That means that that person is going to be able to have access to the access point, uh, to the network, sorry, for one year, which is something very useful. In for example, for um, schools and universities and other companies that use uh, fixed term uh, contracts. Uh, right here, I'm going to use a landing page. I'm going to set a landing page for our to our channel. Uh, and right here, we have uh, other options that we're just going to leave them uh, as it is. Uh, we're not going to use Facebook or Google authentication. So I'm just going to leave it like that. But remember that you have the option. And right here, you're going to have something very, very important, which, which is the Wi-Fi scheduler. Wi-Fi scheduler, like it says, is from when, what time to another time we're going to have an outage of the Wi-Fi or the hotspot. It is very important because it's not the, the schedule in which it is going to be active, but the schedule at which it is not going to be active. We're going to apply the changes and we're going to go to the devices tab right here where you're going to see uh, that my access points have been provisioning the new information. It is very curious that, for example, this access point right here is provisioning also as it is not part of the access point group that has been set for the hotspot. So no problem. We're just going to uh, maybe it is important that all of them receive the information of what information is and is not available for everybody. Once the devices have received the information, we're all set to go. We just go to one mobile device, we connect to the hotspot, we go open the browser, username and password, and we're all good. Um, something very important, and that's why I'm doing it right here. Oh, look at this. For example, when you make a, a customization of the landing page, it's something very cool. You just put marketing uh, uh, information right here, your logo, uh, you remove, for example, the um, radius authentication and you just click accept and it is going to give you internet access. Of course, it is less secure. I do not recommend to do it this way. But for example, for specific situations, you might want to do that in order for people just to connect very quickly and to have access to the internet. If you have, uh, for example, here the network controller, you're going to be able to see a lot of information that is very useful. The clients that are connected to the network, as you saw, there are already 76 uh, um, clients connected to my network. The insights, by the way, the statistics and the insights work very, very well in the unified controllers. They're going to give you stats of about everything you want and if you have a unified dream machine like the one that we're using right now and if you have the deep packet inspection you're going to get more information and you're going to get everything that you need to know about your network even blocking torrents or things that consume a lot of um, uh, a lot of bandwidth i recommend you to watch our video regarding that matter in order for you to block whatever you want. Right here, you can block the client itself. And if you have blocked clients, they are going to be shown over here. Uh, and it is right here in Insight where you can reactivate those clients. Right here, this is a bug uh, of the Unify network controller that it shows terabytes of information being exchanged with certain, uh, certain devices. But that is not true. That is a bug that has been on for a few months or for many months, actually and we have reported it to Unify. Right here we have the always allow, right here, the, the action button, sorry. The action buttons is these two options right here. That is block and forget, which is basically what they do is exactly the same. And, and it is important that in every place you go, you activate the, the columns that are going to give you specific information. For example, I like to um, activate these two columns that show us which networks are active and in which access point. Very cool, very cool um, uh, information that can give, be given to us. Uh, so this one is the procedure for the Dream Machine. Something very quickly, very integrated because it has the, the firewall, the access point. If you go right here to the portal network, it's going to show you very quickly how many clients have connected, at which time. Of course, I just installed it right here, so it is not going to show us much. But once you reach, for example, 300, 400 users, uh, you're going to see a lot of cool things right here. 
Okay, so now let's go to do exactly the same thing, the same procedure in the Cloud Key Generation 2. Basically, it's the same. You're going to see a few differences. It is very important that you notice that you don't have to have, for example, a unified router. You don't have to have a unified power over Ethernet switch. You can have any switch, you can have any router, and you're going to do uh, basically the same procedure as I'm showing you right here. I'm going to change the name of the hotspot. I'm going to change it to hotspot one. Um, as I was telling you, you can have another router, you can have another switch, you can have, uh, what you have to have right here is the network controller that in this case is the UCK generation two, and you have to have unified access points, basically just that. And if, if of course, if you're going to use um, VLAN and the radius authentication for the VLAN, you're gonna have to have a uh, unified switch. Remember that they are layer two um, manageable and you can actually control many things. The hotspot manager, this one is the, I didn't tell you about this, but this one, this link right here is very hard to find. Actually, you would consider copying and pasting it later on as I, uh, as I just did. Uh, copy the link of the hotspot manager page because it is not something that you're going to find in any of the configuration pages of the of the Unify Network Controller. Something that is gonna change for sure, maybe when you watch this video, it is gonna be available in some, some other place. Right here, I'm going to set the voucher authentication method to make it a little bit different. Um, I'm going to create 200 vouchers and I'm gonna set the expiration time for seven hours. Let's, or, or you can put right here whatever you want, uh, as many hours or days uh, you want to, uh, your participants to give access uh, for. Uh, it is important that you watch the video about how to, to send uh, massive amounts of emails using Microsoft Mail Merge because it is something very cool when you receive a um, certain amount of participants in an event and they all have already access to your network. Right here you can have the download limit, the upload limit in speed and of course the byte quota in, if you don't want them to download much more than uh, you want them to download. I also recommend you to watch how to block um, specific services or torrents or whatever you need to block on your network in order to preserve the bandwidth of your network. I recommend you to watch that video. I'm gonna leave you the links in the description of this video and I hope you, you watch those videos in order for you to have more information regarding how to have more control of your network. As we did in the Unify Dream Machine, we can configure everything right here for the, for the local portal and the display of this authentication page. Right here, uh, I'm going just to go and watch. I'm gonna show you something that is uh, very different when you do this in the Unified Dream Machine and when you do it in the UCK Generation 2, and is the network isolation. When you create the access point, or the hotspot, sorry, when you create the hotspot in the Unified Dream Machine, there is something, uh, right here you can just create the, the groups that you want and whatever the session expiration you want to give them, that means when you're going to have to have them um, reload the information. When you have them, uh, as I was telling you, the network isolation is something that you are going to need to configure manually right here in the UCK because the unified cloud key does not have the router included uh, in, in its hardware. So let's go down here. Uh, right here is in case that you need to to use uh, Google or Facebook authentication. We're not gonna mess with that. Right here, if you need to change to another language, you can, of course, have the hotspot running in another language. This one is what I was telling you about, finally. Network isolation, network isolation is already configured automatically when you are setting up um, guest hotspot in, in the Unified Dream Machine. Right here, you would have to manually do it. Of course, if this is something that is going to be a little bit more um, straight through in the Unified Dream Machine, but it's something that is not so difficult to manage. You have to have something very, very clear in your mind is, and it's what is the network that you are creating for? It is just for internet access or is that you want uh, people to have access to certain services in your network? If you want people to have certain services in your network, you do not want to restrict access. You just want to restrict uh, access to certain uh, certain devices, certain computers, and you can do that by assigning VLANs and uh, uh, 
port isolation and many more things that you can do in the Unify switches. And we are done. That is how you do it in the UCK generation two. This one is the hotspot manager page that you can um, that you can visit and have more information. In this case, for example, it is more relevant because it has voucher information. You can um, block vouchers. You can extend the time of the vouchers. You can do many more things. And this is the authentication that you do when you connect to a to a hotspot that has a voucher based authentication. You just Right here, type the number of the voucher. You don't have to, to use the complete uh, the hyphen. You don't have to uh, type it just as it is. You just type the number. Then you're done. You are connected. You have internet access. Thank you very much for watching this video. We appreciate very much if you subscribe to our channel. That is our purpose. That is exactly what we do. Share our experience with you. And we encourage you to do exactly the same. Share your experience. Share what you know. See you next time.